Hey folks, welcome, welcome, welcome out there. I'm Ernie Roberts, I'm your host for today's TN Learn Math Line Summer School Style. We are glad you tuned in this afternoon. Our whole purpose of the summer school program is to basically give you a little bit of a head start into next year. And next year, as in fall, not next year and it's in 2017, but fall is coming quickly. Many of you are going back to school August 1st, some of you August the 8th. But you know what? We're going to be live, ready for your questions, and you're hopefully get some good answers from us on August the 8th. So keep that in mind. Mark it on your calendar. We don't want you to miss out on that. But for right now, it's let's get summer school laid back, take a little easy break, but get prepared for next year. And to do that, get some pencil, get some paper, and let's do some math. All right. What do we got going today, guys? What are we story? It says, cuts like a knife. Oh, you know, that doesn't even sound like a, like a math day, but it actually is because in geometry, the world is how do we cut line segments in half? How do we cut angles in half? We use the word bisect, all right? And we also use midpoints when it comes to line segments. That's not just in the middle somewhere. It specifically divides those two set, that line segment into two congruent pieces, all right? Same thing with a bisector of an angle. It's a ray that's going to divide it into two congruent angles. So let's take a look at an example, all right? Let's see what we've got going on here, okay? Rather than me talking a lot to you, we'll talk, but we'll see some pictures also. We've got the situation here, M, right there is our little point M. It is the midpoint of AB. And we're going to give AB a length of 28 inches, all right? So from A, remember, that's what this means without a line segment symbol over it. It means the distance from A to B. So there we go, from point A out to point B, that is 28 inches right there. It says, what is the length of AM and MB? Now remember, remember what we say when we have a midpoint. Midpoint divides that big, long line segment into two congruent. What does congruent mean? They have the same length. They have the same measure. So we're basically splitting this 28 right down the middle here. That's what it is. A midpoint divides these into two congruent pieces. Now, you say, Ernie, how do we know they're congruent? Well, I can take a ruler maybe and measure them, but that's really not what we want to do here in the world of geometry. We're going to trust symbols. So I'm going to put little tick marks there. That little stretch and this little stretch means they have the same markings. Therefore, these lengths are congruent. So now, if the whole length down here, this little guy is worth 28 inches, that means these are going to be equal. All right, they're going to be the same. So we're going to divide 28 and a half. Now, I think most of you can do that in your head out there. We're going to end up with 14 inches here and 14 inches here. All right, and by the way, for that to be a midpoint, those three points have to be collinear. That means they have to lie on the same line, or in this case, the same line segment, all right? But they line up, and we can go cut it like a knife. Now, let me talk about a bisector here just a second. I have a midpoint, but a bisector is anything that will pass through a midpoint. So, you know, I could draw a line. It doesn't have to come in perpendicular. It doesn't have to come in perfectly straight as we like to look at it. It can come in an angle of all sorts of things, but if it passes through that midpoint, my friends, it's a bisector. It cuts that segment into two pieces, congruent pieces, that is, all right? And that's what makes it a bisector. Another thing it could do, it a, a line segment. A ray could come out of there and do the same thing, all right? A ray could come through here, bisect it. A plane, oh my goodness, we could do so many things. You can get really kind of crazy with these things. But the main idea is it's got to go through that midpoint in order for it to be a bisector, okay? So, that's our storyline today. We're starting with midpoints. We're going to work to bisectors and uh, never know what else might pop up on this show, all right? And of course, the midpoints are going to be running rampant here. Let's take another look at a midpoint situation. This time, we have, once again, M is the midpoint. So we are going to pull and say these two work and these two work together. This little stretch right here from A to M is equal to M to B. Now, by the way, some of you may be wondering, what does, a, what does this congruent symbol look like? All right, let's, go, let's get a little point here going. If we say that AM as a line segment is congruent, it's like it equals with this little squiggle mark over it, okay? And here we go. On the other side, we get oh, BM or MB, however you want to look at it. Let's try that again. How about it? AM congruent to MB. 
We tend to like to go as we go across the part here. And of course, we could also switch these around. We could have MA, we could have BM, although it's, it's either way is fine. But those are your storylines here. These are congruent, which means, which means that we can say the length, which is, by the way, written with AM, to equal MB. Those are two different things. These are talking about numbers. Folks, these are talking about shapes, okay? So AM matching with MB as shapes. Here, the lengths are the same. And that's what we want to know is what's the length? We want to know what are these two guys? Whether well, they're the same, they're the same. That's what we mean by congruence. Then we're going to have 28 right here for AM. That tells me also this little guy down here is going to be 28. And you know what? Talk about the whole thing. Talk about the whole thing. Well, we've got AM is 28. We already knew that. We already know that MB is 28. I could go ahead and tell you that AB, we can figure that one out too. It is 56, 56. Just add those two together or, hey, say 2 times 28, that'll work also. That'll work also. So there's your start. There's your going here. All right, That's what our midpoint business is all about. So let's do a little bit of algebra here. All right, We've got another situation, another picture, another pretty picture. And according to this, we're going to say that M is the midpoint of line segment DF. And we've got dm equaling 4x minus 12. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and label that right here. That is 4x minus our 12. There you got it. All right. And while you're drawing this at home, same story. Over here we got 21 minus the value of 2x. Now don't let that bother you. Some of you, have, oh, what's, what are we going to do here? We are going to be all right. We're going to take care of this. All right, we're going to see what this does with us together. All right, and we put these together. Or what are we going to do? We're not going to put them together, actually, folks. What are we going to do? We're going to set them equal to each other. All right, we're going to see what happens, what happens with this. Now, um, first of all, how do I know they're equal? Because this is a midpoint. So this little segment right here, we'll put two ticks on it. And this little segment right here, two ticks on it, they're equal to each other. So their links are equal to each other. Their shapes are congruent. Links are equal. So let's set them equal and solve for x. And here we go. We're going to figure it out. By the way, solve for x, and then we're going to find what's the whole length, whole length from d to f. All right. So let's do it. 4x minus your 12. Goodness, that's equal to 21 minus 2x. And you know what I'm seeing here? You know what I'm seeing here? I see some opportunities for us to not do the right thing. Okay, so we want to be very, very careful here. Let's be careful. When we move this 2x over here, it's got to be an addition. All right, we're going to add 2x to both sides. And dear friends, that's going to give us 6x minus 12 equaling this value of 21 right over here. Okay. Now, we are going to also send this 12 back through. I'm going to send the 12 back through here. And I'm seeing, what I'm seeing, what I hope you all are seeing is that when we add 12, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 12 to 21. And we are going to end up with 6x equaling, ooh, 33. Now, some of you say, Ernie, that doesn't go completely even. It doesn't, but it's not so bad either. Because when we divide 6 into 33, we are going to end up with x equals, it looks like about 5 and a half. Some of you like 5 and 5 tenths as a decimal. I'm going to go with just that. 5 and our decimal there, because we got basically it goes in there 5 times. Those of you who are wondering, where did that come from? 5 times with a half basically left over. That's 3 out of 6. 3 out of 6. So we're going to make it into a nice decimal. There we go. Now, question asked. Question ask, what is going to happen when we put in 5 and a half and subtract 12? What's going to happen when we put 5 and a half in over here? I'm hoping, folks, that we will get the same answer. All right? <laughs> That's what our game plan is. That's what our game plan is. So let's see. We put in 5 and a half right up here. Oh, well, let's put it over here. How about it? 5, let's see, 5 and a half times our 4. Remember, we're going to multiply first. Then we will subtract 12. All right, and I believe that is going to give me a nice, good old 22 right there. Those of you who like to put on the calculator, you can check me out. You know I'm right. And it equals to 10 on that. So that's telling me this length is going to be, we'll put it right there. It's going to be 10. All right, that's going to be our length. 
the MF length should also be 10. So let's check that one out. So we've got 21 minus 2 times 5 and 5 tenths. And that hopefully will equal 10. Well, let's see what it's going to do. It's going to give us this time 21 minus 11, because that's what 2 times 5 and a half gives. It gives us 11, and you know what? That gives us 10 also. So there are two 10s right here. Our value for df, how about it? 10 plus 10 or 2 times 10? Either way you look at it, we got 20. We got 20. That might be inches, that might be feet, that might be yards. We didn't give any specified units on that one, but that's the idea. So we find x, we go back, and we realize both of these are equal. That's how we check. It's first of how we check. And then we can add them together or double them, and we have the whole length. Great way to go here, all right? So again, that's the story here today on Math Line is cuts like a knife. We're splitting things into two equal or congruent pieces, all right? Let's see what we've got on our next one here. Let's go on our next one here. Little tricky moment here. Little tricky moment. You say, why well, is that tricky, Ernie? Let's take a look. We got M as the midpoint of RT. So that tells me right off the bat, these two little guys, RM and MT, they are going to be happy campers. They are good to go, all right? Now, I know that from M to R, R to M, notice when we do this situation, we are not concerned about which one comes first, all right? Simply the same, means the same length, okay? It, the same distance from M to R as it is to R to M, all right? So I want you to understand that. But this one is a little bit tricky here. We've got the fact we've got uh, 12x minus 18 right here. We'll put that right there. Over here, oh, no, 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 no. RT is not 4x plus 44, is it? No, no, no. It is actually, can y'all look at that for me? That is going to be the whole length, whole length from R to T. Very, very interesting moment here. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That takes us all the way over to T. That takes us all the way back here to R. Folks, this is equal to half of the length. All right, remember these are splitting in half, so this is going to be taking and using the half approach, all right? So what I'm going to do, I've got two options. I could double this side or I could half this side. Since both of these numbers are even, I'm going to go with halving it. So here's the situation. We've got 12x minus our 18 equaling to, are you ready for this? Half of that, one half, 4x plus 44. Now, in case some of you are just tuning in, I don't want you to go like, what's the next step going to be? And where do you come up with that? All right, we're going to show this. This is our setup. Basically, this should be half the long segment. So let's play the algebra at this point. That's what we like to do here on MathLine. Let's see what's going to happen. I've got 12x minus 18 on the left. Let's go ahead and take half of this. It's going to be 2x plus your 22. Y'all see that? Simply half of 4 is 2. Keep the x. Half of 44 is 22. Let's see where this is going to take us. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Good old subtraction property equality running loose here. And say goodbye to those x's. We're ending up with 22 on the right. And we've got 12x minus 18 on the left. Now, it's time to move this 18. And we're getting a little close on my space here, so let's just do that. Let's add 18. And that is going to leave me with, by the way, this is going to leave me with 10x, right? Y'all almost blew that one. Caught that out of the corner of my eye. Be careful now. Yeah, 12 minus 2 is 10. And we got minus 18. And we're going to add 18 to both sides. And this is good news. This is really good news, especially since now it's going to come out even like I wanted it to. Let's see, we got 22 and 18, which is going to give us 40. And our x value should be 10 goes into 40. Oh, that was nice and even. Goes four. Goes four times, all right? So now, questions. We've got a lot of things. We found x. We would like to find out what is going on here at 12x minus 18, and also what is going on down here, all right? What we've got going on down here. So let's take a look. First of all, we've got 12x minus 18, and that is the same thing as saying 12 times 4 minus our 18, 
which by the way, folks, equals 48 minus 18, and that gives me 30. All right, so I'm hanging on 30. Hope it's right. Put that in there with ink. <laughs> Got to be feel definite on that. Let's see what happens with 4x plus 44. Got to go back to our original constraints to see that this works. 4 times 4 plus 44. That gives me 16 plus 44, which is 60. And I know some of you are saying, well, Ernie, I thought they were going to come out even. Oh, remember, remember, this is the whole length of 60. So if you take 30 and you've got 60 for the whole length, that leaves us 30 right there. So here are your lengths. From M to R, it's 30. From T to M, it's 30. And the big RT, 60. All right. So there you go. That's the idea, how we cut like a knife. All right. And let's take a quick look here at this one here. We've got B lying between A and C. Now notice here I did not give you a real complete picture because I want us to understand. Remember, what happens if I say B lies between A and C? That means A and C are my midpoints. Doesn't necessarily have to have A before C, but I'm going to do that alphabetically. Sounds kind of cool. Does not have to be alphabetical. Just remember that, folks. And B is somewhere between here. Now, I don't know where. I don't know where, and I'm afraid I might put this thing in the wrong place, but we're going to take a chance and put it right here, all right? Might have to float it. Might have to float it. Um, is it a midpoint? I don't know that either. I really don't know any of these details because this is very wide open, all right? It's very wide open, so I'm going to play like we're working this problem out ourselves, okay? I'm going to give you a little hint that actually it will go there, all right? So let's see what happens. We've got the situation. We're going to say A, B plus BC equals, all right. So we've got the whole length, my friends. AC is X squared, all right. So let's draw on this thing. So that's X squared. Our little AB moment looks like it's 10. This little guy here is 3X, all right. So what we've got here, we've got a nice little between this moment. By the way, once we learn midpoints, don't assume everything's going to be a midpoint. If they do not tell you you have a midpoint involved, you do not plan on a midpoint happening, okay? You be very careful. It might be a midpoint, but we'll find that out in a minute, okay? Now, let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. We've got this situation that says x squared, which is the big segment, is equal to the sum of these little guys. Now, my friends, remember, when we add 3x and 10, we don't get 13x, all right? We just get 3x plus our 10. That's the situation. Now, what we need to do, we've got an x squared, and my friends, we cannot get rid of that. We can't get rid of this one. So what we've got to do, we're going to have to set this thing equal to zero and factor. All right? Some of you are going, Ooh, I have to remember how to factor when I go back to school. You will find out if you're in a geometry class. You will refresh your memory on factoring very quickly. So, hey, here's your chance. Be ahead of the game, all right? So let's see. We're going to have to subtract 3x. We're going to have to subtract 10. So let's do just that. We've got x squared minus 3x minus 10, all right? And again, don't try to combine these. They're not like terms. They don't do that. They just hang like they are, and they equal to 0. Now we can play the game of factoring. Remember, you've got to set it equal to 0 before you can try to break things open in a, in a trinomial sense or a binomial sense with x squared. So let's see where we're going. Let's see where we're going. I'm going to use two parentheses. That's what we do when we factor. Y'all remember that? Reverse the FOIL process. Reverse your binomials. We want two binomials down here, by the way. And we know we've got to get x squared on the front end, so it's going to be x and x. That part's easy. And we've got to get a minus 10 or a negative 10 when we multiply. So we're thinking of numbers that are going to multiply to give me a negative 10. Well, that would be 5 and 2 or 10 and 1. Um, and one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. So let's put a plus and a minus there because that's the only way we multiply to get negative 10. Now, we want those factors of 10 to add up to negative 3. I like to call it my check term, but it's our linear term in the trinomial here. Let's see where we're going with that. If I put 5 right here, because 5 and 2 have a chance of giving me 3. 10 and 1 have no chance whatsoever. Let's see what happens if I do it this way. I check real quickly. I've got 2x. I have, ooh, minus, I got a 5, a negative 5. That's going to give me what? Minus 3x in the middle. 
Perfect. All right. That's what we want. Now you say, are we done? No, no. And by the way, folks, do not tell me the answers are two and five at this point or two and negative five or different things. What we need to do is just check real quickly. It's going to be x plus two, remember, equaling to zero. Also, x minus five equaling to zero. So we're going to find solutions here for x. First one says we subtract two. We're going to get x equals negative two. Our second one says let's add five. Okay, when you go to the other side. So we've got x equals five. So that's why I wanted to make sure, and that is a definite negative there. All right, we'll make sure that's negative. I don't want you to think that is just an extension of the two. All right, it's negative two, and it is five. Now, let's do quickly, let's eliminate negative two. You say, What's well, negative? Is that the problem? Well, the problem is when I come back up here and say three times negative two, it is bad news. Can't have a negative length, all right? So say goodbye to that, um, to that bad apple there, all right? So goodbye, negative two. Does five work? Does five work? Let's put it in here. Let's see, three times five. Boy, I made this one easy, didn't I? It's gonna be 15. So I've got 10, I've got a positive length. That's good news. Down here, I've got five squared, which is 25. Dear friends, 10 plus 15 does give us 25. So our news is good. Our news is good. Why do I say our news is good? Because it works. 10 plus 15, 25. There's your solution. There's your solution. And by the way, did we find all three links? Well, they gave us the 10. That was easy. Here's three times five. We got 15. And our last length, yeah, I got that 25 all working together. Great little problem there and a chance to review you a little bit on factoring and also just being able to relate how those two segments, the two small segments, add together and give the big one. We call that the segment addition postulate. Take that one to the bank. Sometimes we hear it called the definition between us, depending on which textbook. Sometimes they use them both, all right? But those are what you're looking at in that situation. Now, you say, Ernie, that's all about segments. It was quite a bit about segments. Does it work for angles? Let's take a look at it real quickly, all right? Here's an example of an angle bisecting situation. Notice what I've said. I've got ray XZ. And folks, what is a ray? Remember, it's got an end point. It goes to Z and keeps it going, all right? That's how it works. And it says it bisects WXY, which you can see is a pretty good sized angle there. What we want to do is figure out what is the measure of WXY and YX. Z. If we know right here that this little guy is worth 67 degrees. Now, let's talk about this picture a little bit. Talk about this picture just a tad. Bisecting an angle means I have the same degree. So I'm going to put a little tick mark on this, all right? So we can keep up with that. That also tells me that this little guy up here is also going to get a double tick mark, all right? Because these two angles have to be equal. That's a pretty good drawing there on that ray XZ. It cuts like a knife right through there. Yes, sir. By the way, when we're bisecting a, an angle, it's got to be a ray. It's got to be a ray that kicks that thing into gear, all right, that it's a bisector. You'll usually read that about it. Notice once again, M stands for measure. Going back over somebody's where did that M come from? What's is that slope? No, it's the measure of this angle, all right? So this is also meaning the measure of our other little guy here, y, x, z. All right, so let's talk about this. Bisecting, that's the first thing. Notice we have 67 degrees here. If we are dividing this big angle in half, which we are, that means this one is also going to be 67 degrees, 67 degrees. Add them together or how about it? We can double it. 67 times 2, or 67 plus 67, our big angle here is in degrees is going to equal how much? How much, guys, y'all out there? 134 degrees. Is that the, oh, that's the little one, isn't it? Got to be careful. Got to be careful. This is the big one. Follow, my, follow again here, folks. Let's watch it. W, X, Y, it's 130. Four. That's what we get with 67 plus 67. Our little guy, see, once again, follow the letters, Y, X, Z. That's our 67. Ooh, get careless there. It can happen. You got it backwards, all right? But follow your letters. They will tell you where you are going, all right? That's the good stuff.
All right, so again, we take a look at bisecting angles. We'll do a little more with angles on another show here, another some more pairs. Notice those were adjacent angles that we had result on the inside when we bisected that angle. It was a big obtuse and it became too acute. Hey, all sorts of terminology we can keep reviewing on these angles, all right? Hey, we do have YouTube going on. We have Facebook even. Hey, Facebook, www.facebook.com. With a backward slash TN Learn, we love that you like us there. All right, we love it when you like us. Don't forget, you can send me questions on mathline at tnlearn.org. Hey, problems of the day, where are they? They're on YouTube. www.youtube.com backward slash TN Learn. And also, some of our shows are appearing up there. A lot of our summer shows are getting there. So check us out all the way. We want everybody to know about MathLine. We are here to help you out. And we hope that you've learned a little bit from our lesson today. Take care and we will see you the next time.